Hodson here today in the bodybuilding.com kitchen showing you how to make my 30 minute spaghetti sauce recipe with ground turkey. And this is actually a family recipe of ours that I'm sharing with you guys. And it's really easy. This is a perfect recipe if you come home at the end of the day and you're tired from work and you need to make something for dinner, you can put this together in about 30 minutes. And a lot of people are intimidated when they hear homemade spaghetti sauce, but I think you'll be surprised with how easy it is. Uh, this is a recipe that also, if you're uh, on a tight budget, this is a really good recipe to use because it's only about a dollar to a dollar fifty per serving, depending on how much your meat costs. And today we're going to use ground turkey, but you can substitute it with any kind of lean protein. Some people like to do ground chicken. You could also, if you have access, you could do ground venison or ground elk, and you could also do ground beef as well. For today's recipe, these are the ingredients that we're going to use. We have, we're going to use one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. We are going to use one teaspoon of regular black pepper, one tablespoon of dried parsley, and if you don't have this on hand, it's not the most crucial ingredient, but it does help with the flavor. We have one tablespoon of dried basil, one tablespoon of dried oregano, and then one tablespoon of freshly minced garlic. You can use the pre-minced garlic if you prefer, but I actually already went ahead and, and minced some fresh garlic that came from a garlic clove, and I used four garlic cloves today. And we have one medium-sized onion, and I went ahead and already pre-diced this for today's recipe. And then one eight ounce package of mushrooms. This is optional. If you don't like mushrooms, you definitely don't have to add it. I just really like mushrooms, so we use that. And then I have two pounds of lean ground turkey. And we're using the 93% ground turkey today, but if you want to go extra lean, you can pay a little extra and get the 99% ground turkey. And again, you can substitute any of the other meats that I talked about. And then we're going to use one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And actually, if you can find the petite diced tomatoes, it works a little bit better, but diced works perfectly fine. And we're also going to use one 28 ounce can of regular tomato sauce. So the first thing we're going to do is turn the stove top onto medium heat. And you want to use a bigger pan for this because we're going to add everything into this pot once we cook the meat and once we add the spices and all the tomato sauce. So you want to make sure you have enough room for the two pounds of turkey plus all of the tomatoes. So the first thing we're going to do is put one tablespoon of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. And you don't really need a lot of olive oil. This is basically you just want to kind of coat the bottom of the pan so that way when you're sauteing the onions and the garlic it doesn't burn. So we're going to add our one tablespoon of garlic in here and we're going to add our onion dump that in and then we're also going to add mushrooms and again if you don't like mushrooms you don't have to add them all right and then I'm just gonna wait a few minutes usually usually this takes about three to four minutes maybe five minutes and you just kind of want to continually at first you want to mix it up so the olive oil distributes ev evenly over everything and then you know that this is done once the onions kind of turn a little bit of a translucent color. And you just want to make sure to keep your eye on it because you don't want to burn this. If you burn the onions, it makes the whole thing taste bad and you have to start over. So just really keep your eye on the pot at this point. One thing I really like to do with this recipe is I like to actually make it in bulk. So a lot of times I'll do two or three batches at a time. I have a really big pot at home. And this recipe freezes really well. And so what I'll do is I will put it into portion sizes. So I'll portion it out for one or two portions and put them in Ziploc baggies and put them in the freezer. So that way, if it's the end of the day and you're really tired and you don't really want to make a full dinner, you can just pull one Ziploc bag out of the freezer, cook up some noodles, and you have a meal. All right, so these have been cooking for about five minutes or so, and it's starting to smell really good. It takes the onions from, you know when you cut onions and they make your eyes water? It doesn't smell, it smells really strong. Well now, this just smells really flavorful. And this is a really important step because it adds a lot of flavor to your sauce. 
So what we're going to do now is add the tomato sauce and add the diced tomatoes to your recipe. And we're going to add our diced tomatoes. And the reason we add diced tomatoes instead of two cans of tomato sauce is just because it adds a little bit of texture so your recipe is kind of thick and hearty tasting. So I'm going to take my spoon and just kind of stir that up. And what's going to happen now is the garlic and the onions and the mushrooms, all those flavors are going to start to infuse into the sauce. And now we're going to add our spices. So we're just going to add one teaspoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of dried oregano, one tablespoon of dried basil, and one tablespoon of dried parsley. And then I'm just going to mix that all together. Make sure that it's really blended together well. And then we're going to go ahead, this is one package of ground turkey. So I'm just going to add that to our skillet. And this is what the ground turkey looks like when you buy it in the store. And like I mentioned today, we're going to do the 93%. Just dump that right in. Throw that away. And then what I do is take my spatula and just kind of chunk it up a little bit. And then I'm going to add salt, pepper, and garlic powder just to taste. So if I were to guess, it would be maybe anywhere from two teaspoons to a tablespoon of each. And I just usually, don't be afraid to use a lot. I just sprinkle my pepper until it's coated pretty heavily. And then I'm going to add not quite as much salt, just a little bit of salt. And then garlic powder. And I really like garlic, so I'm going to add quite a bit. But it also makes the meat have a stronger garlic taste to it. So if you don't like as much garlic powder, you don't have to use as much as I just did. And then what I'm going to do is kind of flip this over, and then I'm going to add the spices again. So flip it until you can't really see much of the spice anymore that you just put on. And then we're going to do the same thing. And I think it tastes good when, when the meat has that really nice flavor to it. And you're going to create that by adding the pepper and the garlic powder and a little bit of salt. And then I like to cook my meat until it's really, really brown. I just, that's my preference. Um, so we're going to let this cook for a while. And so this looks, this looks good. We're just going to continue to cook this until the meat is brown all the way through. So our meat's been cooking for about five or six minutes now. And usually about this point, you'll start to notice that there's some fat in the pan. And so I like to drain it. I like to drain the fat in one of the aluminum cans that the tomatoes came in because it's really hot and you don't want to melt it. You wouldn't want to put it in plastic or right into the garbage can or anything like that. So what I usually do is I just tip the pan so that all the fat comes to the end. And I just spoon it into the pan like that. And you want to try and get as big of a spoon as possible. And this is just going to make your meal a little bit leaner and get some of the fat out of there. So now we're going to let this continue to cook. We might have to drain the fat one more time and then we'll add it to our sauce. So our meat is nice and brown. It's all done. And so what I'm going to do now is just check on my sauce. And the sauce looks and it smells really good. And then what we're going to do is just add the meat to the sauce. All right, and then we're just going to stir everything together. 
Now, if you want, if you have time, you can let this sit on your stovetop on low heat or just warm heat for, for up to three hours even. And what will happen is the flavors will continue to simmer together and it will taste even better. But, or you can just serve it straight how it is right now. And that's usually what I do because I'm usually in a rush. So just mix everything together really well. You can tell this is a really thick spaghetti sauce. And, and I like to use a lot of meat when I make my sauce, just so I'm getting a lot of protein when I have one serving. And this is going to make about five or six servings of spaghetti sauce. So now what I'm going to do, we already cooked our spaghetti. And the pasta that I really like to use is this uh, Ezekiel pasta. And it's made by using sprouted grains. And the process of sprouting the grains actually changes the gluten so that it's more of a digestible state. When I eat gluten, I kind of tend to get a little bit bloated, so I really like the Ezekiel brand because it doesn't do that to me. And also, when, when the process of the grains are sprouted, it creates a, a complete protein that's similar to the protein that's found in milk or eggs. So we're just gonna put our, our pasta on the plate here. And if you were, if you wanted a low carb option, you could actually use spaghetti squash instead of pasta. That's what I do when I'm trying to watch my carbs. Spaghetti squash is still a starchy carb, but it's better than pasta. Or you could do, um, a lot of times I'll kind of make a sloppy joe sort of out of this by putting this on an Ezekiel uh, hamburger bun and we'll serve it that way. Or you could even put it in a multi-grain pita and eat it that way. So um, I'm actually gonna measure this out. So. There's one cup. A serving is about a cup and a half. We're just gonna serve it up. And there you go, this looks really good. For this delicious recipe, check the link below. And to check out all my recipes, continue to go to bodybuilding.com where you can find a lot more nutritional information, motivation, and exercise tips.